In this video, we are going to investigate the quotient ring R mod S under its addition and multiplication. And the first thing that I want to do is I want to establish the setting. R is a ring, and it's important to realize that S is an ideal in R. And in the previous videos, we showed that uh, if R mod S is just the set of left cosets of S inside R, then we can define an addition and multiplication on that set of left cosets as follows. We simply, for the addition, we simply add the representatives. For the multiplication, we multiply the representatives. And in the previous videos, we did show that if S is an ideal inside R, then both this, this addition and this code set multiplication are well defined. On our set of left cosets on the set R mod S. And the question that we now have is going to be, is R mod S under this addition and this coset multiplication a full-fledged ring? Well, we know how to investigate that, and so I want to point that out. We know that this guy will be a ring if and only if all of the ring axioms are satisfied. In particular, we have to have closure, we have to have associativity, we have to have commutativity of addition, we have to have distributive laws. There's one for the left and there's one for the right because we do not know whether or not the uh, ring R is, is commutative or not. We also have to have an additive identity element, and we have to have additive inverses for everybody inside the ring. And so to verify that our quotient structure is a ring, we simply have to verify each and every one of these properties. So what I want you to do now is stop the video and try to prove that plus and times are closed. And when you think that you've got that proved, start the video and compare your proof to the one that I present. So hopefully you did that. Here's my proof. We're going to start with two arbitrary elements inside R mod S. So that means we start with two left cosets and we add them together. And notice this is indeed a left coset because A plus B is indeed inside R. And uh, when we multiply two left cosets together, we get this. And A times B is inside R. So this guy is also a left coset. Now, it is important to remember that we are using the fact that uh, so this does use the fact that plus and times are well defined. But we know that they are well defined because, remember, S is an ideal throughout this whole video. Uh, but clearly we have closure. So let's move on. So now what I want you to do is I want you to try to prove the associative law for addition for yourself. So again, stop the video, try to write that proof, and then start the video back up. Hopefully you did that. This is my proof of the associative law. And I kind of want to justify each of the statements. Again, we're starting off with three arbitrary left cosets, and um, we simply s string them together with parentheses around the first two. To go from here to here, that's nothing more than the definition of coset addition. And this is also the definition of coset addition. Going from here to here, we are using the associative law for addition in the ring R. And then 
going from here to here is just the definition of coset addition again. And then we have the definition of coset addition again. And at this point, we have the associative law for addition proved. Moving on. Now stop the video and try to prove the associative law for coset multiplication inside the quotient structure R mod S. Hopefully you've done that. And now you can look at my proof. Again, I'm going to add my reasons. The first step is just what we're going to mean by trying to prove something is associative. We, st we start with three arbitrary cosets, and we put parentheses around the first two. Going from here to here is nothing more than the definition of coset multiplication. Going from here to here is coset multiplication. Going from here to here, we are using the associative law for times inside the ring R. And then we do more definition of coset multiplication and definition of coset multiplication. The upshot, however, is that we have managed to move the parentheses from the first two terms to the parentheses being surrounding the last two terms. And what that means is that we have indeed verified that the associative law for times works. Well, let's move on. We now need to show that addition is commutative. So again, stop the video. Try to prove this for yourself, and then start the video back up and compare your work to mine. So here is my proof. Again, we start with two arbitrary cosets, and we simply add them together. Going from here to here is the definition of coset addition. Going from here to here, we are using the commutative law inside the ring R. And then to go from here to here is the definition of coset addition again. And since we were able to successfully swap the order of the two cosets, we have verified that coset addition is commutative in our quotient structure. So moving right along. I now want you to prove the left distributive law. So stop the video and work on proving the left distributive law. Hopefully you've done that and now you can compare your proof to mine. This is what my proof looks like. So again, we're starting with three arbitrary cosets and we set stuff up where we have one coset times the sum of the other two. And going from here to here, all we're doing is the definition of coset addition. And then to go from this step to this step, we use the definition of coset multiplication. To go from this step to this step, we are using the left distributive law inside the ring R. And then it's nothing more than the definition of coset addition, followed by two copies of the definition of coset multiplication. And what we've now done is we have succeeded in showing that this element here can be strung in front of both of the elements in the sum. And so we have a distributive law on the left side for the uh, quotient structure. I want to say that the proof of the right distributive law is done in the same way, and that is going to be a quickly jot assignment following this particular video. We have a few more things that we have to show before we can claim that this structure is indeed a ring. We have to show that additive that there is an additive identity element. So stop the video, convince yourself that there is an additive identity, and then start the video and compare your proof to mine. Hopefully you did that. Here is my proof that there is an additive identity. The thing that I want to notice is that I am 
starting with this specific element. And this specific element does indeed belong to R mod S because zero is an element inside R. And if we add that particular element to any other coset, well, we get this particular thing. And this and this are by the definition of coset addition. And these two equalities are by the fact that zero is the additive identity inside ring R. And uh, so this particular coset is an additive identity element inside our R mod S structure. It is important to realize, and I want to just kind of make this as a note over here, that 0 plus S is actually just the ideal S itself. We have one last ring axiom that has to be verified before we can claim that our quotient structure is a full-fledged ring, and that's that we need additive inverses. So once more, stop the video, try to prove that additive inverses exist inside this structure, and then start the video and compare your proof to mine. Hopefully you've done that. Here's my proof. If I start with this arbitrary if I start with this arbitrary coset, I know that this guy is inside R mod S since A inside R will imply that minus A also belongs to R. And when I add these two cosets together, lo and behold, what do I get? I get the zero inside of R mod S. That is the zero inside R mod S. Same thing down here. When we add them the other way, we get the zero inside R mod S. And again, these are just the definition of coset addition, and these are additive inverses in ring R. And so we do have A plus S and minus A plus S are additive inverses inside our set of left cosets. And I finally want to just tie this up what we have done is we have now shown that if S is an ideal inside ring R, then R mod S under its coset addition and its coset multiplication is indeed a full-fledged ring. And we call this ring the quotient ring. Sometimes this quotient ring is referred to as a factor ring. The author of the book that we're using this summer is indeed using the terminology factor ring. And let me write that just a little bit neater. But factor ring and quotient ring mean the same thing. I tend to prefer calling it a quotient ring. And remember that we read this guy as R mod S. The final comment that I want to make is that if S is not a full-fledged ideal, then coset multiplication is not well-defined. And that means that R mod S is not a full-fledged ring. We have to have an ideal to make a quotient ring.